In this video, we'll learn a variety of Excel functions and options for Chapter 3. So make sure you're on the first tab in the Excel file that says 3.4 mean and median because we're going to use Excel to help us solve problem 4 out of the textbook. This is the same problem that was in our lecture and also on the worksheet. So in this scenario, we've got 16 cars and the time it takes for these cars to get out of a parking lot. So if we wanted to calculate the average, we can use this formula here. And if, and if we wanted to calculate the median, we can use this formula here. So I'll go ahead and click into this empty box here. And I'll type in equals. And we always have to type in equals. That's the instructions to let Excel know we're about to calculate something. And then I'll go ahead and type in average. And you'll notice that Excel tries to be helpful and pre-populates what it thinks you might need. Uh, and so you can see there's the average. It also gives you a definition in case you need a reminder of what you're working with. And so this is how we'll find the mean of our data. Excel doesn't know what mean is, uh, so you have to use average. I'll go ahead and double click on this to save me a little bit of typing. And you'll see that it finishes typing for me and puts a parentheses to start. And now what I wanna do is go ahead and select our data all of our values, make sure every single one is highlighted, and close my parentheses. Now the other option you have is you can type in the cells that you wanted. And so I could have typed in A2, that's the starting point, th uh, through A17, that's the last number in my set. So it's just whatever your preference is. I'll go ahead and hit enter, and our average or our mean is 117.0625 seconds. Next, let's go ahead and find our median. So I'll type in equals, and I'll type in median, and put a parentheses to start. And again, select my data. Make sure I've got every single number, and I'm very careful with selecting. I don't accidentally drag and copy paste numbers repeatedly or something. And then close my parentheses and hit enter. And we get a median value of 126.5 seconds for the time it takes for these cars to exit the parking lot. Let's go ahead and move on to see how to calculate a mode. Here is the example we saw in the lecture, as well as the formula to find a single mode. So I'll go ahead and just pick an empty box here and type in equals mode. And you'll see there's several mode options. There's multiple modes if you think there's a chance that you might have more than one. Um, but we know we are working with a single mode. So I'll go ahead and double click on this one. It saves me some typing and then select my data, close out parentheses, and hit enter. And it tells me that the mode, or the number that most frequently appears, is 20. Now I know visually you can look and see which number appears most often, but if you were working with a very large data set of maybe like, I don't know, 100, 500, 1,000 data points, that would be much harder to find your mode. So using Excel can speed up and make things easier for you. Now click on the third tab that says Box and Whisker, so here's our data set regarding miles from our example. And I'll go ahead and select all my numbers. And then if I go to insert and go to the insert statistic chart, there's going to be a box and whisker option. Now note that this is only available in Excel 2016. Uh, you can't do this without it. And unfortunately, if you don't have Excel 2016, there's not an easy way to do it. So I'll go ahead and click on that, and now I have my box and whisker plot. Of course, um, I want to retitle it with whatever it is, so box and whisker of miles. Let's go ahead and click on the next tab. We're looking at variation. So this is problem 26 from the text and also the example in our lecture on variation. We were looking at the number of flights business execs take. Now again, I've got my formulas set up here and I've even labeled them to make sure we know which one's which. So let's go ahead and start with the population uh, variation formulas first. And so for the population variance, we'll type in equals var dot p P stands for population. You know, I like my alliteration. And I'll go ahead and start my parentheses off and then select my data values and close parentheses and hit enter. We'll also want to do the same for the population standard deviation. So I'll do equals 
STDEV, that's short for standard deviation, dot, and again it's P for population, and I'll start my parentheses off and then select my data, close out my parentheses, and hit enter. So those are my variation values for a population. Now, if you're asked for the sample variance or sample standard deviation, it's very similar, except that instead of P's, we're working with S's now, S for sample. So let's go ahead and do equals var dot S parentheses. I'll select my data, close out parentheses, and when I hit enter, I get 3.766 and on. And then we'll do the same thing for our sample standard deviation. It's equals STDEV dot S parentheses and select my data again, closing out and hit enter. So this is the way I would recommend finding variance and standard deviation, which is to use Excel rather than doing it by hand. Now, uh, you'll notice though that our numbers here have a lot of decimals, so I do want to show you how to round the decimals so they're a little bit cleaner and easier to work with. So go ahead and select the data that you want to round and make sure you're on the home tab. Uh, right above here there's a box called number and there's this great tool that lets you move your decimals um, and I'm going to de decrease how many decimals I have. Maybe I want to go to four decimals or three or two. The homework will always tell you how far to round and so this will accurately round for you so that you don't accidentally make a human error with your rounding. Now let's go ahead and click on the last tab. It's uh, problem 53 on z-scores. So this box up here, that's the formula or function on how to standardize an x value into a z-score or z-value. Um, we're also given in that problem that our sample mean was 1,000 and our sample standard deviation was 250. So uh, for part A, we'll type in equals and type in standardize. Again, you can just double click on this to save you some time with typing and avoid human error or typos. And Excel will remind you what needs to get plugged in. So that's nice if you don't have my Excel spreadsheets with all the formulas. Um, and it says, what's your X? So my X was the 800. We'll type in comma. What's our mean? That was given to us in the story by 1,000. Do comma and it asks what's the standard deviation. So again that was given to us at 250. Close out parentheses and hit enter and our z score is negative 0.8. Let's go ahead and do part b. It's just good practice. We'll type in equals standardize and I can double click and it asks what's my x. I'll type in 1200 comma. We'll type in the mean of a thousand comma, and the sample standard deviation of 250. Closing out my parentheses and hitting enter. When x is 1200, the z-score is 0 0.8. And then we'll go ahead and do that for part c. Type in equals standardize. I'll just double click. My x is 1000, comma. The sample mean was 1000, comma. And our sample standard deviation is 250. Type that in, close out parentheses, and hit enter. And in this case, when x is 1,000, our z-score is 0, meaning we're in the very center of our distribution, or the starting point. So with z-scores, you do have the option. You can use the formula by hand with a calculator, or you can use Excel and use this uh, helpful function. But either way, you still need to understand what the components mean because you have to put the right numbers in the right place. That's why understanding the concepts and the Greek symbols um, and how they're used and why is really important because just knowing the formulas won't help you if you don't know what x is or what the mean is or what the standard deviation is. So if you have any questions, just let me know.